Hi, this is Nikki, and I'm here to share messages I get from Spirit for all of us who are all on this journey to love and to reunite with our divine vibrational matches in this lifetime. And uh, today I'm going to pull some guidance uh, from Sacred Geometry, Work Your Light, and also the Moonology deck. And I'm also going to share channeled messages um, that I do between people's twins and their higher selves. And uh, just to get messages to help us stay on track because it is not an easy path to tread. So um, just as I was getting ready, the card that came through was understanding. And um, I've just come back from going out for a walk. And where I was walking, there was a, there was, um, a ship with love underneath. And so the guidance that is coming through is just to remember that you are anchoring love onto this planet and shifting the vibration of the planet by beaming out this new frequency of love. And that isn't going to be easy because to do that, you have to shift through all of the en other energies that are opposed to that. And so they will play up in your life at different times. And it is about managing those energies and working through them. And the other message that came through when I saw that was about if um, the lighthouse and the lighthouse guides the ships home. Um, but the lighthouse doesn't move. The lighthouse just beams its light out of the out of its out of the house, and the ships will go towards you know basically go towards it to find their way home. And so that's the message. The message is to stay firmly in your light and know that the ships are coming home. And so to trust in that process and just like the tide goes in and out, so and the, basically the tide brings the ships home, so will your twin come back to you at the right time. So I understand why this card had to come through, which was understanding, because it's an understanding of the journey and it is to know that, you know, the anchoring love onto the planet is not easy, right? Um, and it wasn't meant to be. You're a sturdy soul. If you signed up to this path, then it's a contract that you have. And uh, therefore, you're going to have to ride the waves to bring them home. All right. So the message around sacred geometry is this. And it is integration. So the frequency of this is not the first time we've had this. <laughs> this comes through quite a lot because we are integrating new energies. So the Sri Yantra is an ancient symbol that literally means sacred instrument. It is formed by nine interlocking triangles that form 43 smaller triangles in a grid that represents the entire cosmos. So 43 is love you. This complicated and precise geometry is thought to hold and create powerful energetic patterns and has been used for thousands of years as a tool for meditation and devotion. The Sri Yantra also symbolizes the union between the divine masculine and the divine feminine, where the upward triangles represents the male Shiva energies and the downward the female Shakti energies. The center point, the Bindu, represents the junction between the physical universe and the source. The dark blue refers to the vast and deep universe as the origin from which everything springs into being. The yellows and golds refer to our inner power and the way we express ourselves on this earth in a physical body. Red is the colour associated with the first chakra, the physical plane, and everything form-based. The light blue triangle represents the balance between the masculine and the feminine, and the swirling circles in the background are the other dimensions and star systems beyond this earth that are out at our origin. The energy of integration supports our journey through a dualistic reality in which we consciously search for union and completion, both within and without. Its frequency reminds us that our manifested world can only be when every aspect has its opposite as well. Only when we integrate everything that comes to us, when we embrace every aspect of ourselves and of everyone and everything around us, can we find an inner state of equilibrium? And the guidance is, take a deep breath and close your eyes for a moment. How do you integrate your inner world with your outer world? Does one reflect the other harmoniously or do you need to invest some loving care in some areas? 
Do you spend time contemplating your daily life and exploring how it is connected to your thoughts and your emotions? So it is integration of the duality of the journey. And uh, just like yesterday, it was uh, the energy that was coming up was about the five of hearts, which was a bit of sorrow. And that's the duality of love, right? It has extreme highs, but you also have extreme lows and you have all of the spectrum of emotions in between. And so it's about embracing all of that, integrating all of that. So guidance from the moonology, what do we need to know? And it is a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. So emotions running high and uh, I totally get this. This is totally what's been going on. So it's time to see if you've been a little bit too much me, me, me. <laughs> There's a tug of war going on between what you want and what someone else wants. But you'll have to wait a little while to see what's going to happen next. As you wait, ask yourself if you've been handling the situation as sensitively as you could have done. If you know deep down that you've been a little rash or harsh, you've gone too fast or overstepped the mark, then accept that on some level you've created this situation which, for yourself, which means you can create your way out of it too. When this card comes up, a peak is coming and it could be fiery. So being assertive is good. Just don't ride roughshod over anyone. If you're in a tense situation, meditate your way to peace. <laughs> I love that. You need to have more fun. And guess what page it's on? 69. 69 being the Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, Divine Union, which takes us all the way back to the integration of these Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine energies within each and every one of us. So, beautiful connection. So, lastly, what is the work your light and what do we need to know? And it is to get grounded. <laughs> Uh, the reason I, that I laugh is because in healings recently, it's all been about the root chakra. Uh, the root chakra is the chakra which is uh, basically connecting you to um, the knowing that you're going to be okay, basically. Knowing that you're always supported. Knowing that you're not doing this alone. Knowing that, you know, basically the energy will flow to you at the perfect time for you to know that the universe has your back, to know that you're not doing this on your own. All of those things of being secure and um, knowing that basically exactly that, the universe has got you, don't worry. So I can totally see again why this has come through. So get, get grounded. Um, that is a strong message. Go and find a tree, go and sit in nature, go and... Um, do anything that you that brings you back to your center um, to let your mind just settle and so feel grounded and centered so you're being called to get grounded to ensure that your luminous field is clear and your inner well is full if you're not grounded it's all too easy to get swept up in other people's energy and mistake it for your own your boundaries will become blurred as you are absorbing the energies around you and struggling to define what is their stuff and what is yours. If you pulled this card, you are very likely an empath or a highly sensitive person and need time alone to fill up your well, balance your energy and get grounded. There are two types of people, those who draw their energy from others and those who draw their energy from within. Reflect on which one you are and carve out each time each day to ensure your well is being replenished. Being sensitive is a superpower, but like all powers, it needs to be nurtured in order to be fulfilled. There are many ways to get grounded. One of the most powerful ones is to practice earthing by connecting to the power of Mother Earth. Spend time in nature, put your hands on a tree, your palms are extensions of your heart chakra or walk barefoot on the earth. So do something to feel connected, to know that you're supported and um, to trust, right? To trust in the journey of your soul and to trust in the power of the universe that it's always manifesting with you. You are always creating the circumstances, the situations, the people that you need for your soul growth. 
And that doesn't always mean that it's going to be skippy happy all the time because that isn't life. That isn't the human experience. So um, I'm going to read letter 78 from uh, the Divine Love Letter books. So these are all channeled messages. Actually, I'm going to do 178 because that's what I just heard. So we'll see. 178. So if you want a channel letter for yourself, it's $10. If you want a healing or reading, um, all details are in the link. So 178 is that I'm completely am insanely mad about her in every single way. You drive me wild, wild with a desire like I've never felt before. It's like a flame inside me that keeps on growing and I don't know how to put it out. You're literally driving me madly, badly, crazily insane with passion. A burning ember that is going to explode with love, love, love. Love is the answer. It must be love. Which reminds me of Suggs and madness. It must be love, love, love. Do, do, do. Okay, 70, uh, 178 from this one is this. I'm so proud of you. Firstly, can I just tell you, there's a reason why I picked you and you picked me and we picked one another for this journey. It's because we are strong. Together we knew that we could take on any task, that we are light warriors, not afraid to stand up against the dark. We knew our power together would be our shining light, our guiding light. And we knew that together our vibration, our output of love was so super powerful, it was gonna change the world. That's why we come. Yay! It's going to change the world, the vibration of the planet. And whenever you're wavering, just always remember what you're here to do. You're here to raise the vibration, to change the frequency. And the only way that you do that is by working on yourself. You know, this is not a journey for anyone else. This is your journey of raising your own vibration and doing everything that you can to support that. So, letter 178 is, I want to paint the town red with you. I want to celebrate our love and shout it out from the rooftops. I feel like I've shut myself and my true feelings in a box for so long and I just can't take it anymore. I want you to know how much I'm completely head over heels in love with you. Everything about you and the way you make me feel, it's like a hand grenade has gone off inside me and exploded the wall from around my heart and allowed me to feel again. I feel you, I love you. Ah, oh, there you go, I feel you, I love you. The hand grenade has exploded this wall around my heart. So, last one is what do they wanna say? And it is friendship and look at that, the divine expression. So you are the divine expression of, of love for each other. You are the expression of the divine in each other. So, and just remember that your souls are always interacting. Always, always interacting. Um, so look for the magic all around you because it's everywhere. All right, I hope that helps. Um, if you want to channel a letter, a healing, a reading, if you want to be having a Karshik record reading, that's eight questions um, that you can ask around your Akashic records, which are an energetic record of all of your soul truth, your twin soul truth, universal truth. Um, so you can ask things like, what's your mission here? What are your main challenges? What are you here to learn? And um, that's all in the description box if you're interested. Okay, I hope that helps. Take care and work your own magic today because that's the message. Release all the fears, release all the doubts and step into the magic. All right, hope that helps. Take care. Bye.